Hi everyone, in this video I want to show you a game between Marin Mihail and Vednici Vladislav. The game was played in Romanian Championship from 2018 round 6. Let's see the game. Mihail starts with knight to f3, a flexible move developing the knight towards the center. a6, as we know in an opening, pawn moves are good only if they help us to develop a piece. In our case this pawn move allows the dark square bishop to develop g3, intending to put the light square bishop on the long diagonal, b5, a valid pawn move that controls a4 and c4 squares in white camp, usually b6 is played. This b5 pawn is too advanced and can become a target for white in the future. Black wants to counter white bishop by opposing his own bishop. Bishop to g2, bishop to b7 and d4. White places a pawn in the center and in the same time allows his Darsker bishop to enter the game. Black continues with knight to f6, white king is safe and c5. Another pawn move attacking the center. Another way to continue development was with bishop to e7 and shore castle. Knight to a3 developing and attacking b5 pawn, queen to b6 defending the pawn. Another way to defend this pawn was to play a6. Bringing the queen too early into the opening is not recommended because it can become a target. Usually, in an opening, we should develop pieces, make castle and connect the rooks by moving the queen. d takes on c5, bishop takes on c5. White remove the center tension and help black to develop another piece. b4, this is a free pawn. White idea is to open the b-file and put the rook on b1. Bishop takes on b4 and we can notice that white has two isolated pawns on the a and c files. Rook to b1, bringing the rook on the open file, attacking the bishop and the pawn from b5. Knight to a6, developing the knight on the edge of the board, defending the bishop. Maybe it was better to put the knight on c6. Looking into the database, this is a new move for black. Usually knight to c6 was played here or queen to a5. Bishop to e3, developing and attacking the queen. Queen to a5, knight takes on b5, recovering the material. If black takes the knight, white regains the piece back by playing a3, using the pin. In the game, black decided to finish the opening by castling. As you can see, black king is safe, all pieces are developed and rooks are connected. c3, attacking the bishop, bishop to c5, bishop to d4. White didn't want it to take. And now if black takes on d4, it will help white to improve his pawn structure. White is threatening to take on f6 and damage black pawn structure. Black finishes opening, so in the middle game we need another plan. In this stage of the game we need to attack upon on the weak pawns and squares. In this position white has two weaknesses, the pawn from c three and the one from a two. Also in this position we need to make attacking moves all the time because they help us to improve the position of our pieces. In the game black did this and attacked the rook from b1 by playing bishop to e4, rook to b2, rook a to b8 attacking the knight for a second time, a4 defending, bishop takes on d4, Queen takes on d4, looking at the pawn from a7, knight to c7, attacks the knight and the queen defends the pawn now. c4, defending the knight one more time and if black takes on b5, white will take with the c pawn and he will have a pawn majority on the queen side. Black cannot take on a4 due to knight to c3, forking the bishop and the queen. He will win a piece. Let's see that line after queen takes on a4, knight to c3, queen to a6, rook takes on b8, rook takes on b8, knight takes on e4, knight takes on e4, queen takes on e4. That's why in the game a6 was played. Beside improving our piece position, we can also try to neutralize opponent pieces that stand in our territory. And with this b6 move, black tries to kick the knight away. Knight to d6, the knight goes forward, attacking one more time the bishop, e5. 
attacking the queen. Queen to d2, white wants to exchange queens and black accepts this. Queen takes on d2, rook takes on d2 and black bishop is under attack. So he decided to exchange it for the knight. Bishop takes on f3, e takes on f3. We have an endgame position and the plan here is to attack opponent weak pawns and push our best pawns. Black has no best pawns in this position, so he should attack the pawn from c4 and the one from a4. And he does this by playing a rook to b4. White doesn't defend the pawns. He counterattacks e5 with rook to e1. Black takes on a4 and white takes on e5. And in this position, we can see that black has a best pawn on a6. So he should start pushing it forward. And black starts to do this by giving a check first, and then the a pawn can go forward. Bishop to f1, blocking the check, a5, f4, rook to b8. Black idea is to double on the first rank and take the bishop. Another idea was to put the rook behind the best pawn. King to g2, a4, rook to a5, white is behind the best pawn now. And we can see why it was better to play a rook to a8 two moves ago. Knight c to e8, trying to neutralize the knight. c5, defending. Knight takes on d6, c takes on d6. g6, making room for the king to escape from any checks on the 8th rank. Black wants to attack a d6 pawn with the knight on e4 and also with the rook on b6. Rook to d4, attacking a4 for a second time, a3, rook to d3, a2, rook d to a3. So the pawn from a2 is attacked twice, defended once, black defends it one more time, and bishop to c3. We have three attackers and two defenders. Knight to e4, attacking f2 for a second time, rook takes on a2, Rook takes on f2, check, winning a pawn. Rook takes on f2 and rook takes on a5. Rook to b2, knight takes on d6 and black is a pawn up. Now he has a pass pawn on the d-file. We can see that the bishop is also attacked. So white put the bishop on e2, king to f8, bringing the king into the game. In an end game, the king works best with pawns. Bishop to g4, attacking the pawn, king to e7, defending, rook to e2, check, king to d8, rook to d2, attacking the knight, rook to a6, defending, bishop to e2, attacking the rook, rook to b6, and bishop to d3. f5, controlling e4, allowing the knight to jump on the square in the future. h3, rook to b4, controlling the fourth rank, bishop to e2, attacking the knight, Knight to e4, attacking the rook, and also freeing the d file for the pawn to go forward. Rook to c2, d5, g4, king to d7, rook to a2, intending to go to a7 and check black king. Another way was to take on a5 and create two isolated pawns for black. King to d6, rook to a7, looking at a7 pawn. This is black weakness in this position. Rook to b2, taking the bishop. King to f3 defending. Rook to b3 check. King to g2. Rook to g3 check. King to h2. Rook to e3 attacking the bishop. Bishop to a6. F takes on g4. Black takes and white takes on a h7. Rook to a3 attacking the bishop. Rook to h6. Black cannot take the bishop due to rook to g6, winning the rook. So king to c5, rook takes on g6, rook takes on h3, check. King to g2, rook to g3, check. King to h2, rook to a3, and f5. The drawback of this move is that black can double attack the pawn and the bishop with knight to d6. The knight is interposing between the, the rook and the bishop and in this case the rook attacks the bishop and the knight attacks the pawn. White cannot save both pieces. So after knight to d6, bishop to f1, 
rook to a2 check, king to g1. If the king goes to uh, g3, we would have knight takes on a5 check. White cannot take the g pawn because knight to a3 fork after king to f3, knight takes on f1. In the game, king to g1 was played, knight takes on f5. As you can see, black is two pawns up, white took on g4, recovering some material. But this is a mistake because after black, next move, rook to a1, white resigned. Let's see some possible continuation. If white uh, tries to get out of the pin with, uh, for example, king to f2, black can take the bishop and fork the king and the rook. If the rook goes to g8, black can continue with knight to a3, attacking the bishop one more time. And if white tries to defend the bishop, black exchanges all the pieces because the pawn endgame is won. Black takes the opposition and uh, after king to e1, king to d3, king to d1, d4, king to e1, king to c2, king to e2, and d3 check. So we can stop here. So after this game from round 6, Venici is the sole leader of the Romanian Championship with 5 points out of 6. So this was the game between Marin Mihail and Venici Vladislav. I hope you found this video useful. Please watch other games from my channel and leave some comments and suggestions in the comments section. See you next time. Bye.